hold on to your ideas. What I've heard in the last few days, you, you guys have been here, um, is a lot of emphasis and value placed on participation um, in finding solutions to urban problems and urban issues. And, and much as it's absolutely important and valid, uh, I think for us, working in the public sector, for me, from my experience, the challenge has been how do you achieve participation in an efficient and effective manner, okay? You don't have all the time in the world. You don't have all the resources in the world. Uh, some of us don't even have the patience, but we are mandated to do it. So how do we make sure that we achieve our goals, whether those goals are dictated by law or dictated by the community in an efficient and effective manner? So what, what, I'm, what I'm going to do in the next uh, hour and a half or so, a few hours, is to bring to the floor um, what I've observed in my few years of doing participation, both in the real world and in the academic, so-called theoretical world. Um, here we do a lot of executive training programs for uh, municipalities and, and uh, the, the, the uh, what do you call the uh, seaport Dubai world. So this is what I enjoy doing a lot of times uh, because it's very easy to say participation, participation, but guys, when reality strikes, it's not easy. Particularly when you have very tricky or difficult or controversial issues. Okay? Now, in the case of municipalities, um, as we've shared with you in this group before, we are always trying in the participation process to reconcile or bring together motives, all right? The motives of the stakeholders. And generally, research has shown that if you look at all the stakeholders in any community, they can be clustered into four, okay? Stakeholders can be clustered into four based on, if you will, their motives. Uh, motives is the reason, the, 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 the rationale. So if you take the public sector, which is what we call government, that's one sector. So anybody who works for the government, directly or indirectly, is in the public sector. And the motive, the, the, the rationale, the motive of the public sector is what? What's the motive of the public sector? To provide. Okay. Provide service. Yeah. Provide efficient service. Okay. In the, in, in, the, in the political science literature, all that is called to serve the public interest. Okay? The public interest. Now, as I shared with you before, in every society, public interest is defined by law. So if you go to court or you take a citizen to court, or a citizen takes the government to court, the court will rule on the basis of what's good for the public. And in many parts of the world, including the UAE here, public interest is a legal concept that is defined based on four criteria. The health of the people, the safety of the people, the morals of the people, and the welfare of the people. So the court will say, look, we created those three bombs, although you guys are complaining, because of public safety. We decided to tell everybody to stop shopping, in our case in Dubai, uh, we shop till one o'clock sometimes on the weekends, and people here go, wow. Uh, but the government can say, look, we want, and I, and I remember the, the case of South Africa during the World Cup, uh, electricity is a problem, so we should go to bed at six o'clock. The minister said, stupid minister said that. And uh, it was a funny idea, but what we're saying is this, whatever the government does will be justified on the basis of public interest. Okay, now, 
The other sector, which is very, very important, and you talked about over and over in this group, is what is loosely called the private sector. But the private sector has to be disaggregated. You have the corporate and the other private is the NGO or the so-called philanthropic, the philanthropic sector. And the reason why that disaggregation is important is because of the motive. What is the, so if the motive of government is to serve the public, what's the motive of the corporate sector? Money. Absolutely. Which is what? Profit. Money. Okay. Now, NGOs, what's their motive? Service. Service. Okay, what in literature is called advocacy. Mm -hmm. You advocate for a cause. I believe in the right of mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. Nobody should kill any mosquito. Yeah, you go, are you, are you crazy? I believe in the right of children. I believe in the right of women. Somebody says, well, it's winter, I'm going to go naked because I don't want to wear a fall coat. You see that all the time, okay? So, advocacy for a cause, and the cause differs from one area to another. And that distinction is very important because many people say, well, NGOs provide service, but unlike government, NGOs are more specific. The fourth sector is the so-called citizen sector or the grassroots, the grassroots sector. And what's the, this is where yes. grassroots, grassroots, uh, brown, mm -hmm. grassroots, which is, uh, citizen sector, okay, community sector, mm -hmm. where it's <coughs> me, how do you say that? Uh, me, myself, and I? Mm -hmm. Is that it? Mm -hmm. It's all about me, okay? What's the motive? What's my motive as an individual? At the end of the day, <coughs> it's me, myself, and I. Me, my family, and I. Here, the motive is self preservation. I want to put food on the table for me. I want to put food on, on the table for my family. Before I'm a government official, before I'm a corporate executive, before I'm an advocacy person, I am me, all right? So it's important. Now, when you talk about participation, we're talking about you municipal officials struggling to balance these conflicting interests. So the government says, don't speed. I say, well, I'm rushing to work, and I can't be late because my boss says I shouldn't be late. But the government says, don't speed. Yeah? Uh, how do we reconcile affordable housing? And, I, and, and I'm recording back to affordable housing. <coughs> Traffic, right? Uh, I saw a, a, a video recently in Cairo. Young people who are working in garbage dumps to feed their family. And the news reporter went to them and said, do you know that you are hurting your health? You are breathing all these toxic fumes. And the young people look at the reporter and said, are you crazy? I have to take care of my family. I'm the only breadwinner. Okay? Reconciling interest. Now, you as the government official, you say, well, in the public interest, you cannot go into the dump. That's the revelation. Young people go into the dump to feed their families. You arrest them. So how do you get people to participate in decision making uh, in municipalities or in large urban systems? So let's look at, uh, very quickly, what would you consider to be some advantages? Okay. Of course, the, 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 the whole issue of participation has its intellectual origins in every field. So you'll be hearing jargons from theology, jargons from engineering, jargons from economics. And, and that speaks to the importance of participation. In every aspect of our lives, in every aspect of governance, participation, and I think somebody mentioned it from way back, it's the key. Now for us, again, and I, I read this interesting article yesterday, that technology or no technology, private partnerships or no public-private partnerships, 
the communication ability of technocrats would be the key to success in all these areas. And the author linked communication to your ability to negotiate between and amongst parties, your ability to engage people in decision-making processes. Okay? And I said to myself, well, maybe technocrats need to become monks or what? Rabbis or imams, because only an imam can play that kind of role. But I think that speaks to the responsibility on your shoulders in large government systems that are going to get more complex, more controversial, more challenging. So, there is all sorts of theories and concepts from different fields, and what I want to find out from you very, very quickly, what, what are some key values? What are, and here I want, I don't want a sentence. I want a word or two, all right? Well, a sentence, short sentence, clear, specific, sweet, straightforward, all right? What are, in your view, some of the advantages of participation. Quickly, who wants to start? Diversify. Diversify. Engage. Engage the community. Synergy. 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 Exchange knowledge. Exchange knowledge. Building relations. Building relations. Building relations. Empathy, sympathy. Empathy, sympathy. And what's the difference between empathy and sympathy? Should technocrats be sympathetic? Human rights. Okay, should technocrats be sympathetic? No. Should not be empathetic? It should be empathetic. Yeah, I, 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 Awareness, uh, what you mentioned, Ms. Nora, avoidance of litigation. Okay, you don't want to keep suing government, every little thing, as in the case of the US. All you need to do is, you know, show up with a bulldozer to clean the street and somebody sues the government. Ah, that bulldozer is disturbing my mental equilibrium. Uh, so, we, we, we want to avoid that because it's not in the interest of government to waste public money going to court. It's not in, in the interest of citizens, and that goes back to your point, Mr. Rashid, uh, Mr. Rashid. Building relationships, okay? You talked about public will from day one. Public will is the lifeblood of governance, okay? Now, so building relationships, citizen responsibility. Now, these are some issues from the literature, which, of course, you guys have just shared. So, uh, your thinking is in line with the thinking in the literature. Um, helps to restore belief in human spirit. Uh, this is a concept you might want to look up later. Um, some of the earliest urban studies from the German school of community sociology talked about Gemeinschaft as natural will the will to do good in the community, <coughs> whether, it, whether it has any value for you or not. And what we discover in urban systems is that that will is gone. You only interact with somebody these days because there's something in it for me. There's something in it for you. Uh, take direction. You're looking for direction. You will see somebody and you won't even say hello to them or you won't, you won't just, you know, Salam, simple hello. But if you need direction, you will stop that person and ask for direction, and that's the end of the transaction. So the, 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 the good old days, as we say, where you just did something because it's good, it makes you feel good and gone. Now, participation helps to restore some of that. Moving right, and, and I want to get very quickly to the exercise, because that's the fun part of it. So participation is not about, finding fault. But you know very well, those of you who deal with it every day, the moment you call groups together for decision making or their input, the first thing is to, government is wrong, government is this, the banks are bad, and everybody tries to find fault. 
Our role as technocrats is to avoid that kind of risk and build relationships, if you will. Uh, it's about consensus. Two different stakeholders coexisting in the same space known as cities. Now, what are some key principles? And I want us to go around very, very quickly. Just read number one, two, three. Uh, these are 12 key principles extracted from the literature. And they definitely, if I had asked you to, to, to give me some principles, and principles very simply are guidelines. So if we go back um, to your exercise, which I'm coming back to, if you have to write principles for municipalities to achieve affordable housing, what will those principles be? Principles are simple guidelines. If you want to get to this point, do A, B, C, B. So these are some key principles for effective participation in cities. Number one, the principle of what? It must be, right, the more purpose. It must be purpose. It must be a purpose. You can't just tell stakeholders to come together and then you say, well, because we want to have tea and, and enjoy coffee, there must be a purpose. And that purpose, guys, and we're coming back to this concept, value creation. There must be value. And value is this, what we work together to create so we can enjoy the cake together. I, I come to your, your, your birthday party and I'm, I'm sitting there and I eat all the cake and all the sweets and I don't even give you a card or, are you with me? Nothing like happy birthday. So value has to be co-created and many, many times again in the case of public sector, people come to a meeting because government called the meeting and all it is, okay, when am I going to get that bus station? When am I going to get the free bus at, uh, what do you call those passes? What about citizens giving back, no matter how tiny their contribution is to creating that value? Number two? The representative. Okay, representative. If you have to go out there to look for a presentation, very, very important. Number three, please. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah. Mr. Rashid, your glasses. Because, yeah, because yeah. I don't see. You have to start using things. those. <laughs> yeah, I just told you about. <laughs> uh, collaboration, guys, is this. Value what everybody brings to the table. And sometimes people forget that even showing up at the meeting is contribution. Just yeah. showing up. Um, it's not about being able to write a report. It's not about being able to do research. It's not about being able to pay. It's what little input everybody brings, and that's collaboration. Uh, next, please. Sure. Okay. And this concept of due diligence, which you business people know, due diligence is about, uh, as they say, it's about dotting your eyes and crossing your teeth. That is, you do not leave anything to change. It's about planning, doing your homework. And guys, many times, technocrats, we have the bad image we have because we don't do our homework. And somebody yesterday said, oh, private schools are better than public schools. We had that debate. Okay? Mm -hmm. So due diligence in the banking sense is making sure, you remember all of you that have credit cards, when you get your credit card, the agreement, there are three pages of some right, you can't even read, you can't see, and then it's okay, just sign here. All right, so due to the <coughs> next place, efficient. efficient. Now, we're going to come to this idea of monochronic and polychronic. Efficiency is about getting results with reasonable or at reasonable cost. Efficiency is different from effectiveness. Effectiveness is getting your results. Efficiency is getting the result without blowing your budget. Um, in terms of participation, I used time as an example. Uh, monochronic, you Swiss guys, time. Uh, polychronic, we hear about, you know, all right, next please. 
effective, and we've heard this over and over again. Participation has to be about effective purposes. Purposes that are smart, and smart is what? Specific, measurable, measurable attainable or achievable, realistic, and time-bound. Okay? So, specific, measurable, achievable, or attainable, realistic, and time-bound. Seven, please. It's me called transparent. And everywhere you go, when they talk about governance today, they talk about the pillars of governance, transparency, and next, Accountable. Accountable. So, an effective participation process must be built on these principles. Next, please. Legitimate. Legitimate. There must be some legitimacy, right? And next. Informative. Informative. You, somebody said earlier about you have to learn something from the participation process. People have to learn. And the good thing about learning and I won't bother you about the, 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 this, uh, uh, the whole thing about communication in an attempt to inform. Uh, the thing about information is that it helps people to change their views about phenomena. Okay? So, I have this information, my God, so government is doing so much. Instead of me coming to blame government or criticize, now I know better. Uh, next, please. Engaging. Engaging. Yeah. All right. And what we're going to, the exercise we're going to do later on is an example. A participation process would not be effective if it's boring and you just, people are just, they just finish and let's get out of here. Okay? And what that means, guys, is that we must come up with little, little strategies to keep people engaged. Um, my students always tell me, why don't you break the eyes? I like, what eyes? <laughs> but you just come in and you start teaching. Do something to get us all. And I go, I can dance. I've never danced for you guys. But, but the idea of breaking the eyes or developing exercises to engage uh, the audience. And finally, empowering. empowering. Okay? People must be able to use information from a participation exercise to empower, to move to the next level. The whole concept of scaling up, as you find in many UN documents. Uh, the UN always talks about communities undertaking projects that allow people to scale up, which is move to the next level. Uh, so we're going to come back to, to some of this in the next few months. Now, due diligence. When we talk about you and me doing our homework, one of the suggestions in the literature is that when you are stranded, when you are thought, what am I going to do to make this participation exercise effective in preparing, in doing your homework, it's important that you are guided by the so-called they call it Kipling Seven Southern Questions. Uh, Kipling was a reporter, a British reporter, born in India. Um, and, and he said, look, whenever I'm about to interview very important people in the world, or whenever I'm in a situation where I am stuck as a reporter, I use the seven Southern Questions. Well, he started with six. Uh, but in the literature, it's now seven. So I want to ask you, right? Who is participating? What is the purpose of participation? Where will the participation take place? When will it be? Why are we participating? How? What's the seventh seven question? How much? How much? That's here. How? Who can guess? Who can? What's the seventh seven? All right. Think. Who? What? Where? When? Why? How? It starts, okay, let, let's make this easy. It starts with the W. Home. 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 Home.
here. What's that? Seven question. When we was where to do? Can no it starts with the Who's? Yes, yes. Who are the Who's? Who's? <laughs> it's simpler than you guys think. Come on, think. Can we open Google? <laughs> it starts with a W. All right. How about which? Which, 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 which? After selecting, it's simple. Tomorrow, stop. Sometimes silly answers feel you like it. Which? Okay. Well, now, mind. what are the outcomes? And, and please, I, I want. I'm, I'm going through this very quickly. You will have this uh, notes. So you can you can go through this uh, later on. What is known in the literature as the Thomas Kilman Thomas Kilman framework of decision outcomes? So if we have participation, what do I want to achieve? In politics, everywhere you go, people say, oh, we want the community to be in a win-win situation. Yeah? What's win-win? Nobody equal. Is that yes. is, is that one one situation? It's it's win. Okay. Everybody win. Everybody win. No, nobody win. Everyone is win. Okay. Is compromise the same as win win? The switch is divided. The outcome is for both. Uh, everybody win. Is win win possible in life? No. Is win-win possible yeah. in life, no. in real life? How? Uh, and, um, no. Did you, say, did you say that word? Um, empathy? Yeah. With empathy? Not sympathy. Empathy. <coughs> empathy with the other person. Be it empathy, empathy is empathy is your shoe because yeah. of what if I've not lost my mom? And you've lost your mom and you come in. When one situation is there, yes, so that's in the shoes of the other one. But I, that's sympathy, not empathy. Yes. Because I've not lost my mom. Sympathy yes. is. Yes, okay. Win win is with empathy. Okay. When one situation is there. Alright, so give, me, give, give me an example of uh, an urban problem, urban issue. Any example that you want to resolve. You want participation to resolve the issue. Transport. Transport. That's telling me. There is sky, <laughs> transport, and about plane, train, yeah. ship, cars, donkey, cars, okay. Uh, public public transport. Transport. okay, public transport. Now you're a bit more specific. That's what I want specificity because it helps. Us. And, and guys, this goes back again to citizen participation. When you go and you have all the stakeholders looking at you. You need to be specific. You cannot leave room for somebody to start translating. Oh, you call us here to talk about transport. My 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 camel needs <laughs> my camel needs new shoes. Yeah, specificity is very important. So when you say transport, you are not saying public transport. Still, I'm wondering public transport. The different massive massive uh, different options more people Okay, let me do this. Phrase, <coughs> phrase a question, an issue you want us to resolve as members of the city community. So, public participation. You want us to come to resolve an issue. Give me an example quickly. New road. Uh, all right, a new road through a community. All right. All right, I don't want a road. I'm one of those NIMBY, not in my back yet, and I'm N I M B Y NIMBY. Okay. Everybody else wants it. The Chamber of Commerce wants it. The environmentalists don't want it. You want to reach. You want to reach what? Consensus. All right. Now, what will be a win-win situation in this scenario? Tell me. Build the road and make the environmentalists angry. Don't the middle of the road and make the businesses angry? Uh, uh, the the and as we talked about, create value. Create value, and that value is going to be that cake, which has a slice for everybody, right? 
Now, the point I'm driving at is this. What's win-win in this situation? Just somebody should tell me. Okay. Okay. Compromising, compromising consensus. Is consensus and compromise the same as win-win? Win-win is absolutely impossible in, in your world, planners and managers. It's a political concept that is used to make people go, oh, thank you very much. Compromise and consensus is what we are talking about. And, and this is the argument that uh, Kilman made, and, and we'll look at that. Maybe it's a win-win situation. It cannot be with okay. individuals with government, but between people, it could be a win-win situation. Win-win, both parties or all parties are happy. And, and my point to you is this. In dealing with urban issues, in dealing with real life issues, there's no win win. The moment somebody takes a step towards you to say, look, I empathize with you, I agree with you, I will move towards you so that we can reach a consensus, then it's no longer win win. Win win is I come to the table. Remember when you were in, in participation, you come to the table, I come to the table, somebody else comes to the table. Win will be, I got everything I want, you, you got everything you want. And that's impossible. So what we're talking about, and, and, and please, we can talk more. Uh, this, the second old, uh, scenario is win-lose. Win-lose is known as the zero-sum game, where there's, I got everything I want, and you are so mad, and I could care less. And you know, that's what they used to teach in business schools those days. <coughs> Go out there and your competitor knock them out. Okay? Until the recent recession. Okay? Now, moving right along, the third option lose lose. We come, you curse my grandmother out, I curse you out, and we walk away. It's okay. I don't care, I don't want it, and I don't want you to get it. Lose lose. Now, you don't want participation to be that outcome. Now, the fourth scenario is the lose-win. And what's the difference between lose-win and win-lose? Okay? Lose-win, very simply, is you are at home with your son, Mr. Miguel. Your son says, Dad, let's wrestle. Let's arm wrestle, right? So you sit at the dining table, of course, mom is busy in the kitchen, and you are wrestling with your son. You know the four-year-old kid cannot beat you. But when you lock arms, you're trying very hard, and then all of a sudden, you let your arm go. Yeah? And the little kid says, wow, I beat daddy. And what does he do? He goes to the kitchen, mom, I just knocked daddy out. You lost so that he would be happy. You do it to your small sister, your small brother. You give, so you lose so that he could win. Now, in business, there's sometimes you need to strategize for that. You lose because you know you're going to gain a customer or a client down the road. Now, the fifth, which is compromise. This is the real thing for us. How do we get stakeholders to give a little are you with me? If somebody doesn't yield trust me, you cannot reach a decision. If somebody doesn't say, look, well, we are good, we are good neighbors. I'm going to I'm going to yield. Okay? Now, this is captured and, and you can take time. This is the Thomas Kilman framework. The Thomas Kilman framework. And look at this diagram very carefully. You can look at it later. Compromise or consensus is what we are interested in. And that would require what you discussed earlier as the elements of effective participation, information, building trust. So somebody is not saying, well, you know what, I came to this meeting because I always heard that you're a very bad person. You're bad, but now that I talk to you, you're not that bad. I discovered that we are supposed to be good neighbors. So you begin to compromise rather than try to win or lose. You can look at this later if you will. This is more about the framework. Now, these are some very useful concepts I want to run by you very quickly when you talk about participation.
when we go into communities, the whole concept of BATMA, Best Alternative to Negotiated Settlement, is where we go with what you described earlier as options. If we want to build that road, if some people are against it, here is the next best thing. We are probably not going to make the road 10 lanes, we'll make it six. What is your partner? What is your best alternative to a negotiated uh, um, agreement? Then there is the concept of ZOPA, Zone of Possible Agreement. As participants begin to debate and argue and fight, as the facilitator, you begin to make notes. Hmm, I heard him say something and she said something about consensus. Very good. I heard her say something about empathy and somebody else agreed. You begin to identify the so-called zones of possible agreement. Uh, somebody says something and the whole group says, oh, come on. Go, okay, let's stay away from So, Zopa, very simply, Zone of Possible Agreement. Um, I will skip right next, and we've already talked about creating value. Personal closure trap is another concept. In participation, you don't want people to walk away thinking that they have an agreement when they don't. And this is very similar to business. You can go and say, okay, thank you very much for coming. Uh, we will do that deal. We'll do that deal with you. We'll put in 95% of the funding. You're happy and you go home and you know. And then the next day, then you get a phone call. Well, uh, are you ready to put in your 50%? And you say, no, but you told me 95%. Where's the, where the agreement? So don't, in, 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 the, in, in, in participation, what we're saying is this. Help stakeholders to have some written contract. Handshake is not good enough because the issues you deal with in municipalities are very, very tricky, controversial issues, if you would. Now, moving right along, these are issues that we must be careful about in participation. Dubai has how many nationalities? About 161, between 160 and 180 nationalities in Dubai. Each of your I mean your, your systems, you can count, I think somebody said uh, 90 something. In, 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 in. Each of you, you have people from all over the world. And as we've talked about, if you want to engage, if you want them to participate, we need to be able to pay attention to their cultural, if you will, uniqueness in terms of these concepts. Again, these are concepts you can read about in the literature, uh, power distance, time orientation, space orientation. It's interesting, there are some societies, if you have this kind of arrangement, you will see every other chair will be empty because the idea of Tactile is unique to cultures. Um, communication, high context, low context. Arabic is known to be high context language because one word can mean several things. And that same word, depending on your body language, can mean totally different things. So we need to be attentive to those in, in participation. Uh, particularly in large urban systems because, as we said, for various reasons, including globalization, you now have people in your community who you probably would have never known about unless you go to Wikipedia, right? So, uh, prerequisites will skip, some risk factors will skip, you, you, you get those in your notes. Um, now, as we said earlier, Participation is to, amongst other reasons, help people to change their viewpoints. Edward de Bono came up with this very simple exercise that you can do in any situation. Uh, and the question he addresses, how do people think about issues? How do people look at issues? So if we take road expansion, yeah? It's okay, we want to talk about building this new road. Yeah, you engineers, as different from architects, as different from sociologists, uh, will look at this issue from different
different standpoints. This is what the Bolo said, and when we go into a participation exercise and you begin to hear people talk about, say, poverty or road construction or housing, um, you begin to map their perspectives. Those who were the quite, let's see, uh, all right, this is expensive. According to De Bono, those who wear the white hat are those who think on about data. They'll say, okay, you want to do that, or give me the numbers, give me what budget are we spending. They, they, they're all about you know, data information. Of course, the red hat, empathy. Oh, we don't want the road built because it's going to kill all the animals. Oh, we want the, they are about emotions. They, 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 they approach issues uh, emotionally. Yellow hat, okay? Yellow hat are the so-called optimistic. They are always looking at the bright side. They're looking for what's good in everything. Uh, the black hat, of course, they come out and say, oh no, everything is negative. Everything, no matter what you say, is negative. And what De Bono is saying is that in a participation exercise, when you gauge, when you begin to gauge people's thinking, your effort should be to help you change their thinking hats towards this, which is about let's find creative ways, let's find innovative ways to address issues. Uh, so take time again to delve into the literature. These exercises are very handy, guys. You can use this at your workplace. You can use this at home with family members. You can use this in public uh, forums. The other thing in the literature is the so-called personality types. We have to understand the personality types of people participating in public processes. Um, according to studies, 18% of every community consists of drivers, influencers, steady and compliant. And I, I would, I would uh, request you to read through this later on. Now, in, 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 in participation, we also have to remember that when issues are about values, they are harder to change than when they are about behavior. Okay? Driving is a uh, behavior. So you can tell me, look, don't drive and text, right? When issues are about <coughs> values, they are harder to change. And, and the so-called uh, Hofstede, Hofstede is a German sociology, um, he came up with what he called the onion, the onion analogy of values, of culture rather. So he said inside the onion you have values, outside the values you have norms, outside the norms you have attitudes, and outside the attitudes you have behaviors. For us as public servants, it's easier to deal with what you see people do than to go and tell them to change their values because Values are collective assets, but your behavior is your behavior. I would suspect that in every society, there is a lot of value placed on honesty. Do not steal, do not take somebody's property. But I go pick up somebody's property without that permission. So values are harder to change than behaviors, and in participation, this concept is very important. Good yeah. behavior. It's become a value. It's possible, but that's going to take a long time and it's going to take a lot of discussion in a community. All right, um, what I want to do now, this is action. There are all these techniques in the literature and you can read up on all these techniques. I want us to practice some of this very, very quickly, and that's why I got you into the exercise of uh, housing. The, the, the two that I want us to practice, depending on time, we'll do the nominal group, we'll do the, uh, let's
let's see, the nominal group leads to the step ladder, and if time allows, we'll do the Jokari window. All these are specific techniques, guys, that you can use, and some of you probably are very familiar with the uh, West fo Focus Group. That's very popular out there. Um, architects are very fond of charrettes, right? Charrette. Charrette. Architects use that a lot, engineers. So, what we want to do is a demonstration of how you can use some of these techniques for public participation. So, we have an issue on the table. How do we provide affordable housing in large urban systems around the world? How do we address traffic congestion? How do we address reckless driving? How do we address, yesterday you brought up the issue of crime. How do large urban systems address crime in their jurisdiction? So, taking housing, the nominal group technique process is this. This is what the, the, the nominal group, the NGT, it starts with a silent generation of ideas on post-its. Okay? You've done that. You've done that. You've done that. What is NGT, sir? So, NGT? Nominal group technique. Uh, oh, okay. Right, nominal group technique number two, NDT. Okay. I thought it was uh, one of those speed cars at first, you know, the <laughs> Nissan. Okay, uh, nominal group technique. So these are the stages we are going to follow. The issue has been defined, and as I said before, guys, part of your due diligence is to define an issue as clearly and unambiguously as possible. Believe it or not, the moment you create any room for misinterpretation, you are dead on arrival. Okay? So, let's take affordable housing or workforce housing as our issue. You've generated your idea silently. The good thing is to time, as we did, time the group. Because remember we said efficiency. You don't have all day. So time the group. Those who don't, and, and, and this is where I was talking about the option. Those who don't want to write, at least the good thing about the process, we said it's equitable. She has her chance, and I am picking on you because you already confessed <laughs> uh, exactly. No, but those who don't want to participate have the right not to. You are not denying them the right. Now, unlike other techniques where, for example, you ask people to raise their hand, some people will be very quiet or very shy. I don't want to, you know, or if my boss is sitting next to me, mm, I don't want to say. So this method allows that equity of participation. Now, the next step is round robin sharing and clustering of ideas. This works in one of two ways. Okay, I can. My favorite is to ask each one to get up. You read your three ideas and you post them. We we'll go around the room. Number one, you get the blood flowing. Number two, everybody gets a chance without being questioned. You're not, it's not about arguing. You post your ideas. If I say consensus and you say consensus, of course, those two go together. If at the end of the day all of us say consensus, hey, we have a uh, a vote right there. Okay, the other way to do number two is this. If you feel that if the issue is very sensitive and you don't, people don't want to be identified with ideas, then just gather the ideas in a basket. Because remember there's no name. You gather the ideas in a basket and as the facilitator, you read each one out and you create clusters. That way I don't know who said send all the homeless people back to their countries, give them free housing, you don't know who said what. But again, as I said, it will depend on the sensitivity of the issue and, if you will, your own knowledge of the group and the profile of the group. Then the third is idea clarification by request only. What that means is that after we post our ideas, 
somebody says uh, there is a word there I don't understand. What's SDG? Okay, so you only explain that and what SDG means. It's not about defending or critiquing or criticizing anything out there. That it's not about questioning. Okay, then number four is idea synthesis where the facilitator says, okay, you've seen all the ideas, you've read all the ideas, is there anyone in the room that wants to change their mind? Which means you go to the board, if you say, look, hmm, people are laughing at my idea, I really don't think it's going to go, and I don't want to waste my vote. You can move your idea into a cluster that you feel comfortable with, okay? Or you can literally withdraw your idea from the board. Because remember, at the end, it's going to be voting or an arithmetic clustering of the idea. So let's do this very quickly. Um, we'll talk for the you get up and you post it. So we'll go to that. We we'll use that board. Okay, Mr. Abdullah, you get up. Round robin. You read idea number one. You create clusters. Okay. So, go right ahead. Yep, yeah, you go to the board. Read. Read idea number one, post it. Number two, post it. Number three, post it. And read to everybody's hearing. Remember, at the end, we will have to submit only three ideas to the United Nations. Okay. Number one. Number one, generate more jobs with with uh, acceptable income. Okay, could you could you put uh, Miss? Uh, could you just at the top would write what? Jobs. Okay. Jobs, right? Okay. Okay. Jobs. 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 Jobs oh, or oh, jobs, huh? Yeah. Here on the top of it, like this. Exactly. All right. Number two. Number two. Facilitate finance of housing. Okay, create a category and give it a topic that you know. Huh? Okay, what is it? Finance. Okay, finance. Finance or housing? Finance for housing. Okay. This one is the street. Number three. Uh, establish more roads and streets. You don't. <laughs> You see? <laughs> okay. Read that again, please. Huh? Read that again, please. Uh, establish, I don't know, for roads, you say establish or make. Roads, you don't establish. Make, infrastructure. Make, infrastructure. Make, develop infrastructure. Huh? Develop infrastructure, that's what you're trying to say. I, I mean only roads. Roads, because okay. roads. Okay, all right. Create a category called roads. Number three, roads. Are you with you, you're beginning to see the issue of clarity here. You go up there and people are beginning to, what is it you are saying? And it can really slow down decision making or participation. All right, thank you. Number two, Mr. Sosi. I have only two. It doesn't matter if you have one or zero. You have your chance. Okay, what do you have? Uh, advocate innovative techniques uh, such as incremental housing. Technique, and you're all looking at me. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's the category called? Technique. Uh, technique. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> Leave it blank. Okay. Put a huge question mark if you're not sure. Because, yeah, yeah, put it there. Put it. Big question mark. All right. Um, develop a regulatory regulatory framework to protect informal settlements from speculations resulting in harassment. Okay. So regulations. Regulations. Okay. Just regulations to protect. Okay. This the 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 uh, low income housing from being taken over by rich developers. So regulations. All right, Mr. Rashid. You even can't read <laughs> here. <laughs> uh, show, man. Go ahead, Rashid. 
simply a short, mid, long term plan. And I call it a plan. Okay, so category plan. Lower, lower, please, lower. Yeah, because some of you may come. Okay, go. Plan. What are you using? I like this exercise. Next time, make your ideas more. <laughs> okay. Okay, encourage private to invest in the infrastructure. <laughs> and this is, I call it. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> encourage private to invest in huh? the yeah. infrastructure. <laughs> <laughs> and I call it. Uh, infrastructure. Infrastructure generally? Yeah. Yes. Interesting. And, uh, okay. Now remember, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching. Sorry? To not go with the road? It's, it's, it's his look. This is the good thing about this exercise. You are teaching to tell somebody. I almost asked a question, but you just. Absolutely. The third one is social participation. And I call it social. Social participation. Yes. Okay, let's put P, please, so that at least social participation. <coughs> okay, great. Miss <laughs> Nora? Okay. <laughs> Hold your fire. Okay. Collaborate with other authorities to have a comprehensive master plan. Collaboration. Between authorities. So it's collaboration, not planning. Not planning. Okay, so collaboration. collaboration. Okay, the other. Right. Okay. Okay, the, the second one is use sustainable, sustainable building materials. Right. Materials. Sustainable at, uh, above that place. That's mm -hmm. very important. Mm -hmm. oh, I just put green. Green, that's fine. Green? Green, yeah. Green material, okay? What's a green material? <laughs> oh, good. All right. Miss Esther. Thank you. Um, for me, it's a trace, but uh, I think it's in right. Right to a house with accessibility to efficient uh, public transport. No walk, more than 15 meters. Infrastructure? 500 meters, sir. Hmm? Okay. Right now? No, no, no. no. Your, not, it's your decision. Do you want to okay. create a category or do you want to. Okay, okay. it's right. Right to house. Then, like, jobs should go there. Because it's, it's, uh, it's uh, the miss housing, but uh, yeah. it's not the okay. main okay. Okay. right. No, 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 it's, it's, it's your show. Don't explain it. Ah, okay. Uh, right to a house home, house home, and it's with public services, water, electricity, accessibility. Yes, this is good. Yes. No, it's right. I still no, right. It's yes, for me it's right. Okay. The tree is right to a house near to green infrastructures. Hospital, education, place, good, job, security, police, place, and other right. Right, interesting. Right to all. She's a strategist. She's an engineer, right? No, I am an architect. Oh, and I'm okay. a okay. <laughs> Already she has three votes, so guys, be careful. <laughs> 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 all right, uh, Miss uh, Miss Salen. I have only one. Oh, you managed to get one. It's about providing a clean air, which could be under the regulations. It's your. It, okay, it's your. I'm just, uh, so, or it could be uh, plan or environment. So, it could be three. Of it's them. your decision. So, so, I think I will put it under the regulations because this oh, is the one. Okay. All right, Ms. Nita. Uh, effective use of space and land. Effectiveness. 
think, guys, one of the things we also have to learn as the facilitator, there's this temptation for you to jump in. You need to really, really hold your firepower. Um, the other thing, many of you look at me when you hear something, and I feel uncomfortable because I'm saying, it's not my idea, so don't look at me. <laughs> All right. Uh, and the second is uh, government subsidies for the uh, like the first down payment and uh, to subsidize uh, subsidy the bank to give more loans. Okay. And uh, the last one is increase income. Increase income. Okay. All right. Miss Maria. I have a part, social participation. So. Thank you. Nikki is mine. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a basic service: transport, water, energy, and public space for recreation and education. Okay. Like so do you want to create a category or is it? No, it's it in right. Thank you. Two, five. <laughs> 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 I have establishing a close link between transport and housing authorities. Okay. In in collaboration, I think. You think or you did you you decide? Um I decide. Maybe communication and collaboration. And um, increase regulation and awareness mm -hmm. about the use of water. Uh, it's in, um, remember, remember you, you can you don't have to you can create your own category. You, you understand yeah. that? Yeah. So don't don't feel tempted. If you feel it's a it's a standalone initiative, then be bold to create a category for it. Okay. Now, let me fast forward as we do this. Remember, you will have to write a policy document for the United Nations. You will have to write a document that says this are both these are indicators, and this is how we recommend this be achieved. Okay, so this is serious participation in terms of substance, in terms of value, and and it's it's not in many of our cities we turn participation into a shouting march, soccer march. Ah, yeah, everybody's screaming, and you're sitting there. Oh no, we have to pay attention to value of participation. And that value has to be the link between ideas, the clarity of ideas, the brilliance of ideas, and public policy, public programs. Okay, the third one, or the second? It's the third one. Implementation of different transport modes and accessibility connections. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and the last one is blank. No, it's the extra one. It's monitoring the accommodation. Oh, that's four? No. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> Everybody had three. I, I have. I'm oh. having one. So oh, unless you want to buy. Oh, yes, you want to buy. Oh, your money has it. No, you can, you can have less. But you can have more. Okay? All right. <laughs> okay. Redensify the urban area. Focusing plan. <laughs> of course. Enforce rural areas. <laughs> Enforce rural areas. Enforce. Enforce. Oh, okay, okay. And ensure global primary education. Okay. Mr. Miguel. Education for kids. 
decent housing for the people. <laughs> and uh, there is drinking water for all. All right. Together, put the man. So, I have new technologies for construction, I can put it in, it's, it's, not, kind of, it's, it's not really material. It's in the question mark. Okay. Sorry? Okay. It's in the question mark. Question mark. Question mark. No, you can put your own. No, but it's construction. It's, it's the same yeah. thing. We don't have construction. You can put... Construction. Infrastructure. Let's do construction. Technology. Technology. Doesn't So new technology for construction, better rental markets instead of buying, maybe financing. Thank it's you. It's not really good. <laughs> but then better jobs. Yes. <laughs> Okay, the next stage in the next uh, step is idea clarification by request only. Is there anything you see on the board, any terminology, any jargon that you want explained? And we just go around, everybody gets a chance, only one chance. If there's nothing you want explained, and I'm not talking about, oh, what do you mean by Education rights, no. If there is, um, for example, when I put NGT, what does NGT mean? Okay. Or what is social P, right? So any idea or concept, terminology you want to explain, it's going, going. All right, so we all understand what's up. The next step then is idea synthesis. You've heard, and some of you I know, some of you are saying, look, I, I like that idea, or you know what? So who wants to go up and move their ideas, whether it is, for example, if I have road and green materials, somebody all of a sudden said, well, I like green material, and I, I think in the end I might vote for it. So it doesn't matter, because now it's about vote, it's about, it's about counting. Anybody wants to, go up there and negotiate their ideas. Yeah. Even, Nora, how you will go or no? uh, okay. I think we can combine it. Okay, 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 okay. That's, where, that's idea yeah. synthesis. You can combine only if it's your idea. Oh, okay. <laughs> you cannot. Uh, you cannot combine other idea. <laughs> you cannot take somebody's idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Somebody has to All right, go ahead. I think green materials can go under technology construction. Very good. Okay, so that's idea. Now she's she's, she's <coughs> synthesizing and renegotiating her idea. No, leave this. Leave oh. it. Leave it. Leave it. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody might come and say, "Hey, I'm moving all my education to green." Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else wants to? Or if you want to remove your idea completely, I don't like any you know, of these ideas, but I don't think I'm going to get any vote anyway. So, is, is renaming. Mine, but uh, uh, renaming. For, for example, like question mark, the name. I can have oh. Yeah. Is that but yours? To do, question mark is mine. Rename one of these? Because question mark, you can say I, I want to change the name of my category. You yes. can. Because, because the, the, the category and rights. Oh, no, no, no. You cannot rename it for No? Her. No, no, no you, you, you can. You can rename the title. 
housing, drinking water like this, but Rotten not uh, you. what you have posted. No, can we pause <laughs> if you if you can wink at uh, wink at somebody without okay because because the first question was we we will reformulate yes, the ten or the three most important goals yeah one is yeah and when you say rights everybody must have rights. But not well, everybody have Okay, I, I understand what you say now. Yes, if for example rights it's not a goal. If it ends up, you know, as it does now, with more votes, the language, yes, you can say, look, let in our policy document, if let's not call it green, let's call it something, let's not call it rights, let's call it something. It, at that stage it's about writing a document. Because remember, and, and each of us here, every day we get this huge document from the UN, uh, from some regional organizations. Oh, the ministers want us to do this now. And so you're right, the language can be negotiated after we vote on the category. Okay? All right. We are negotiating ideas. Are you interested or are you willing to move your ideas or remove your ideas from the board or you just want to leave it as it is? No, I would like to be there. Okay, all right. Very good. Um, so, idea generally. So, let's move on to the voting. This is very simple. Remember, we have to submit only three initiatives. From what we see on the board, there are, I think, the three top vote earning initiatives, right? Or, Depending again on the issue and how important you can say, look, guys, we have more time. Um, there are some good ideas here that can be combined, as you said earlier. Can we go through one more round of idea negotiation? Okay, because as you said, we can we can get green infrastructure achieved if we focus on technology, building technology. Um, collaboration can go with. But it's not about now. It's about when you do this in your municipality or in your, in your, in your agency, depending on how much time you have, you can go back and forth, and this is the iteration of the process. At this stage, uh, in the interest of time, I, I would bring the process to a close by picking the top three vote-earning initiatives. So which initiative has the most vote? Right. Okay. Right. Which one is second? Education. Education. And then, which one is third? Aha. Oh. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. But the no. three ideas for us come from second. I think that. Oh yeah. It doesn't matter because she it had. Doesn't. Everybody had an opportunity for three ideas. The person who had only I one. Oh, you put it on. Now, now, because we said, okay, idea negotiation, you could have moved during the negotiation to say, look, you know what? I'm going to create my own three votes for myself, okay? Um, the, the three ideas that have a tie, this is how you break the tie. Very simply, you can do it secretly, secret ballot. Everybody take a piece of paper and rank each of those. Technology, planning, infrastructure, social participation, collaboration, give each a number one, two, three, four. So we'll see how many people gave technology number one. Are you with me? Or if it's a friendly group like you guys, you just ask for a show of hands. How many people would vote for collaboration as the third option? How many people would vote for social participation? How many people would vote for and as I say, if it's a friendly group where you know you don't, you're not going to be punching each other after the meeting, okay? But if it's a very sensitive issue and people don't want to be known for voting for or against their neighbor, then you do it secretly. Take a piece of paper, give numbers to, and then you collect the papers. The technology got six votes. Planning got, okay? Are you with me? All of them are important now. Sorry? I think that is not necessarily the vote because rural <coughs> can be plenty, 
Well, they planning, depend, planning and no, urban planning is urban things. It, 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 it can, <laughs> but the person who put it there has to make that decision. Yes, because planning is integrated. Yeah. And sometimes, sometimes you can, again, depending on the time you have, you can ask individuals to, each person to take, I'm going to give you okay. 40 seconds, all right? 40 seconds to appeal for moving a vote. But the, the, the principle is equity. Everybody has to have the 40 seconds. So you can say, um, I think Rura can go under if the person for Rura would agree to move it. You have your 40 seconds. If the person doesn't move, all right? I think, so if this get the basic principles, the danger is for people to get too excited and you don't want that. Okay? Because that's what happens in town meetings or open forums. Um, what I want to end with very quickly, again, in the interest of time, is uh, this is very interesting for agents, participation in agencies. Let me ask, how many of you would say you truly know your colleagues at work? Of course, other than you know that this person is the director of transportation, you know that. How many of you know the skills and the talents of your colleagues at work? Okay. Now, in, in community participation, as we said earlier, you want everybody to contribute something. As I said, the old lady who comes, every meeting she's there. The old man who comes, every meeting he's there. That's a contribution. Okay? The person who is able to write minutes, that's a contribution. Some people, in, in, if you say, look, we want, we want to get people out, there are some people that will go from door to door and they will help you bring people out. That's their skill. There are people who can, when, when you have a controversy in a group, they can easily talk to somebody and say, look, you know what, calm down, it's going to be all right. That's a skill. Johari Window is a method that was developed by uh, psychologists to bring out the best to identify people's skills. So what I want us to do in this group uh, is that the, just to demonstrate who wants to volunteer to be guinea pig? Who wants to volunteer? I want to be used for this exercise. I just want one person just for this exercise. We don't have time. I was going to ask us to pair up or break into two groups, but let's use one person as an example. Very good. Miss Mora, all right. You take one of this place. All right. Okay. All right. You take one and you sit with uh, and yeah. You yeah. Yep. Yeah. One to each person and. Oh, it's the same thing. Okay. All right. That's all right. Now. Very quickly, uh, okay, you can see that. Very quickly, what we, the Johari window is to help bring out the best in your community. Um, the first question, or the, 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 the point is this, and when you go into the slides, you will find more notes. But in, in the interest of time, you've met Miss Nora in the last few days we've been here, right? What is it about her that she knows of herself that we also know about her? So, I want you to jot down anything you know about Miss Nora, okay, that she also knows about herself. Now, the interesting thing is this. If, if, if we have time, you can start by putting some words down, so you can say uh, friendly, and, and I'm saying you, you have this listed on a piece of paper, and you give that the qualities to her. So we are looking at, let's say, 10 criteria, but in this, in this, at this time, I'm not going to give you 10 characteristics. I just want to take a, a, a risk and ask you, 
What do you know about Miss Nora? That's the first question. So write down two things, just two things. Sorry? In the in the north in the northwest box, in the northwest quadrant, known to self, that's known to herself and known to others. A good example, we know her name. So name, right? She knows her name, I believe. <laughs> okay. What else do you know about her that she knows you know? Um, Mr. Miguel just said one a moment ago, and I would have written, I would write that down. She knows that. <coughs> Two things. You know her name? Yeah. You know she's short? Where is her? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Miguel said she's short, so, and she knows she's short. Yeah? She knows now, I this could be in a community, this could be some other characteristic that you want to, for example, a good speaker, a good community mobilizer, um, all right? So she knows she's a good physics teacher. She knows she's this, all right? The next column, no, no, in, in, in this exercise, and it's more interesting than I'm making it because I'm rushing in the interest of time. Your aim at the end is to reduce the blind spot and reduce the unknown and increase the arena. We want to know more about everybody in, the, in, in, our, in our agency or community. Okay, so let's down the, the, the south, the southwest quadrant. Okay, the southwest quadrant. What is it that she knows about herself? Okay, not known to us. This is long related to her. Understand. Not uh, known to others, known myself? to herself. Yeah. So how can I? Okay. Two <laughs> things. Okay. <laughs> Very one. good. Very good example. She said age. Hey, okay. Not me. not known to us. Okay. I don't know her okay. age. I don't know her uh, degree. I. I I don't know if it's someone, one of you is the engineer, both. Okay, so what is it that, and, and this goes back to, okay, please take time and, and I'll be glad to, to, to share more notes with you. You can have some descriptors. So that you say, okay, from these characteristics, I want you to look at these characteristics. What is it here that you do not know about? So age can be there, degree, um, exactly, all right, okay, so, um, the second, second language, second language, or, okay, I don't know whether she speaks another language, she knows, yeah, all right, I mean, okay, so the third, the, the north, the north uh, east quadrant, not known to her, but known, I mean, not known to her, but known to us. Okay? This quadrant here, what is it that she doesn't know, and we know, and you know how we all talk. Oh my God, that guy, or that guy, that guy. And my students did this to me, and I ran out of the classroom, believe me. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I did this for some executives, and <laughs> This ladies broke out in groups, and this ladies worked for an organization. They've been together for years, and after they went through this exercise, a few of them didn't come back. They were so, I mean, it was, they, they had so much fun, because they got to know things about each other. Having worked for 10 years, they never knew those things about each other, okay? So, what is it that is not known to her, but known to us? And again, when you have time, you, you write down some characteristics. Is she um, a warm person? Does she, is she on time? You write some characteristics that you want the group to pick from. So now, known to, not known to her, but known to us. She's always late. 
Okay, maybe I'm not saying that. <laughs> she is she is generous. <laughs> and then she will go, oh, wow. I, I, okay, for example, uh, Mr. Abslam, the other day, and, and this is just what I observed, um, a soft speaker. Okay? Because when I told him to speak about him, I almost, uh, so you mean, you know, are you deaf? And I had my airplug in that day. But he, he doesn't know he's a soft speaker, and, but it's known to us. Now, in your workplace, believe me, people know things about you that you, when they tell you, they will what? All right? So that's that quadrant. Now, the last quadrant here, what you do not know about yourself and what we do not know about you, which is that he has. Exactly, the, the future thing. Again, it, we don't have time, so I would, but I would encourage each of this when you read the instructions, just like the, the, the NGT, the, the steps are very, very clear. The steps are very, very clear. There is uh, quickly, um, all right, the fishbowl technique, all right? The fishbowl or the step, step ladder, very, very quickly. Um, two people, a core group, two people will have two chairs here, all right? and one, two people and one empty chair, okay? The two people will discuss housing. What should we do to provide housing? The rest of the <coughs> group would be listening. You time the core group, two minutes, for you guys, to, the two of you, to talk about initiatives, yeah? So you come up with initiatives. Remember, there's an empty chair. After two minutes, somebody from the audience will come into that empty chair, right? One of the two people would leave. There must always be an empty chair, okay? So he comes into the chair, I leave. The two of them, so this initiatives, um, two minutes of discussion, right? After two minutes, somebody from the audience, remember you are listening to them, she may say, okay, I really want to support this guy's idea, so I'm going to that empty chair. The moment she comes in, somebody would leave the uh, one of the chairs. So there's always an empty chair. Now, you guys are listening. She says, look, I don't like this idea they're talking about, so I'm going to go into the chair, right? So two minutes, somebody leaves the, 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 the audience, she comes. That goes on until everybody has had a chance to be in the fishbowl. Very simple, exciting. Good to generate ideas. Absolutely. But because you are listening to the core group, the two people, and there's a chair, the moment two minutes pass, you go in to contribute your ideas. Now, as the conversation is going on, you are recording the support for the various ideas. So at the end, when everybody has had a chance to go into the fishbowl, you say, well, the last one hour we've had everybody coming. These are the top three ideas that people discussed. One, two, three. Simple, clear. All right. Now the 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 other alternative is you keep the group outside. All right. You keep the group out. The two people in the in the core group. There's no third chair. There are two people. They talk, okay, let's use this group. Let's see how they call group. Generate three ideas, discuss, let's say one idea. Which one of these ideas do you want to vote for? Okay, you have 30 seconds. Pick one idea on the board. Which one will be your one? Number one. Yours. Any. Regulation. Which one will be your? Um, All right. You now have 30 seconds to reach some consensus. So it's try to convince him or you try to convince him. Now, you do that if at the end of one minute or two minutes they do not agree, then it means they have two ideas on the table, right? But if he convinces him and they vote on one idea, then they have one idea. Then, after two minutes, you call somebody from out, from the, remember you guys are outside, so you don't know what they're talking about. So when you come in, the, the two of them will look at you and say, okay, you have one minute, 30 seconds to tell us your number one, 
and 30 seconds for us to tell you what we decided. Remember, you do not know what they decided. So you come in and you pick collaboration. And they say, hmm, why collaboration? Why? Okay, we voted on finance. Do you want to support finance or can you convince us to support collaboration? Yeah? Okay, after two minutes, right, the three of them now, right? You come in. You have one minute, 30 seconds to tell the group what you pick, and 30 seconds for them to tell you what they voted on. So you come in and you're looking at three people and you say, oh my god, I don't know what they decided. I want green development. And they say, why? Can you support what we decided or convince us to support yours? Four people in the group now. The next person comes in from outside. Are you with me? So everybody, that's the step ladder. Everybody steps in. So the last person to come in would have 12 people looking at him. Which one do you pick? And you're like, okay. Just two of you now. They don't look too. They don't look too friendly. And then it's okay. Um, I pick education. Why education? Convince us. And at that point, you say, okay. If you can win the twelve over, you must be great. Or they will tell you, all right, we voted on this idea or two ideas. Do you want to support? Because remember, at the end, we will have to pick only three ideas. So everybody comes in. That's the fairness of the process. Okay. Now, in summary, the step ladder, people are outside, they come into the group. The fish bowl, everybody is watching the core group. There's an empty chair. Okay? <coughs> so, these techniques are absolutely important and, and I've used almost all these um, in, in various forums. The good thing is that depending on the sensitivity of the issue, you can always pick a technique that animates the group, a technique that makes them involved, because it's involved, and as somebody said, the value of the ideas. Okay? Too many times participation in the public sector is misconstrued to be an opportunity to abuse government officials, to scream at government officials, to point fingers. We need to reverse that to help people contribute ideas that are substantive, pragmatic, feasible, and of course that help us address issues that we face in large problem systems. I leave you, um, I will leave the notes with uh, uh, Mr. Mohammed, and hopefully, I, I found these 10 effective negotiation skills which also apply to participation. I found them very, very helpful. Take time to browse through this. I have lots of materials on this subject, so if you want, you can either contact me directly or ask Mr. Mohamed to get some of the backup materials for you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. And that's it.